As a youngster, I read a lot of science fiction, which opened my mind to the possibility of life on other worlds. Until recently, we humans could only guess about this. But today, we live in a scientific renaissance. A golden age of technology where fictional possibilities give way to extraordinary discoveries. Thanks to our high-tech tools, we may be on the verge of solving the mystery of alien life. For instance, until recently, the investigators tracking down E.T. had to search from down here on Earth. But now, we finally have a detective in outer space. On March 6, 2009, NASA launched the Kepler Space Telescope. Kepler is the first ever satellite solely devoted to the hunt for planets outside our solar system. The hope is that Kepler will not just find more planets, but will discover planets roughly similar in size and atmosphere to Earth. Such planets could support life. William Baruki is the principal investigator for the Kepler mission. He's been planning this for 25 years. Ever since I was a little boy, I was interested in space exploration. We used to lie on a garage roof during meteor showers and use cameras to take pictures of meteors. So it's a dream come true to work with NASA and actually be able to come up with a mission that will help us understand what might be out in space. The beauty of Kepler is its simplicity. It looks for planets by measuring how much light a planet blocks when it passes in front of its sun. This is called a transit. A familiar example occurs during a lunar or solar eclipse, when sunlight is blocked by the moon or Earth's shadow. This is easy for us to see with the naked eye. But finding an Earth-like planet transiting a distant star is much more difficult. An Earth-sized transit's really, really tiny. So it's like watching a flea crossing a car headlight at a really long distance, and you find that you measure it, and you measure it accurately. Kepler measures these minute changes in light. Tiny differences between light and dark tells it where the planets are. So what you see is some curve showing light being constant, a dip, the planet goes across and comes back up again. So you're looking for that dip in light for each star when a planet goes across. And the bigger the planet, the more light it blocks, the bigger the dip. And so we can tell the size of the planet from the size of the dip. But it isn't practical to observe one star at a time. Baruki had to find a way to look at many stars together. An unprecedented, some said impossible goal. We had to show that we can measure the brightness of these stars, 100,000 of them, simultaneously. It was met with a great deal of skepticism. And the science community actually published an article saying that can't be done. And so it took us quite a while to show that, yes, you can do that. You can build a wide field of view telescope with a huge number of pixels that measure all these stars simultaneously. And then you can watch each and every individual star to see if a planet is crossing it. Kepler does this with amazing accuracy. Basically, it's a huge camera that orbits in space. It does not orbit the Earth. It orbits the Sun. And so it can look at one group of stars between the Cygnus constellation and the constellation of Lyra. 150,000 stars simultaneously and make a measurement of each of those every six seconds. Once Kepler detects a planet, the planet's orbital size can be calculated along with its mass and surface temperature. As a member of the Kepler Science Working Group, Jeff Marcy believes that Kepler is the next great step toward finding life on other planets. I think in the next few years we will find the first planets of Earth size, Earth mass, maybe even Earth-like temperatures rendering them habitable. And I think it's 
fair to say that one of the great goals of the next decade or two is to build a terrestrial planet finder that can actually take pictures of other Earths and ascertain whether there's any habitability possible on that planet and indeed life there as well. Payoff is, is just a pure knowledge of are there Earths, lots of Earths out there. If there are, there's probably a lot of life out there. If the opposite occurs, we don't find any, there never will be a Star Trek. There's no place to go to. Better technology is getting us closer to finding those other Earths. For instance, by fine-tuning our sensors, we can now read the light reflected off a planet's surface. This lets us determine the chemical composition of that planet's atmosphere. Now that we can analyze atmospheres, we can start looking for the unique environmental signatures of alien civilizations. Every form of technology leaves a footprint on its environment. For example, if you're looking at Earth from a long way away, uh, you see global warming. That's our footprint. Well, uh, in we can imagine a civilization that might have been around for an immense period of time would leave a much bigger footprint, maybe not just on its planet, but on its entire astronomical environment. So we should look for anything out there in space, any anomaly, anything that looks like it could not have a natural explanation. We're finding new planets every day, but so far our investigation hasn't turned up any aliens. What if we're looking in the wrong places for the wrong things? What if a real-life alien isn't anything like the creatures of our imagination? I'm a